Welcome everyone. In this series of videos we'll be going over the basics of Linux. Uh, if you're an old user, have been using Linux for a long time, most of this information is going to be old news to you. Nothing really new. But for new users, this is the place to be. What is Linux? Linux in a sense is just another operating system similar to Windows and Mac OS in the sense that it's an operating system. But that's where the line draw is drawn right there, just at the operating system level. Um, Linux is so full of differences, which I will cover most of those in continuing videos. But for right now, we're going to stick with the basics. Um, so, some reasons to switch to Linux. It's free and open source. Uh, you do not have to pay anyone for the privilege to use Linux. You can donate to Linux. Uh, they do appreciate it. Uh, production. It runs on all, it runs on less hardware than Windows requires. Lightweight, like I said. Uh, you can, there's operating systems out there that can run on 256 megabytes of RAM with an old Pentium processor and it will run and run faster than what it did on Windows in most cases. Um, there is little to no tracking so like Windows 10 full of tracking software full of telemetry none of that is in Linux and gaming. Gaming has grown by leaps and bounds so without further ado let's get into it to install Linux onto your machine you'll need a few things. Some of the things you'll need is of course the Linux operating system. And to get that you go to the internet, you type in the Linux distro of your choice whether it be Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, Manjaro, whatever. Point is you need to get a Linux distro that you you want to try out. Uh, it might not be Ubuntu, it could be something else. That is com your choice. That is the whole purpose of Linux. It's all about choices and how you want your operating system to be. But I recommend Ubuntu to new users. Ubuntu is super easy to install. It holds your hand. There's a huge community behind it, so if something goes wrong, you can generally find an answer that you need. Or if you're trying to install something, you can generally find something that will point you in the right direction. Now, with Ubuntu, there are several different choices you can make. Of course, you got regular old Ubuntu, which is Ubuntu GNOME. Kubuntu, Lubuntu, Bungie, Catalan, Mate, Studio, and Zubuntu. Um, there are. S what makes those all different is the desktop. Um, GNOME looks a lot like that. In fact, that is GNOME. Um, you got your little quick launch bar right here, and you got this that goes into your applications. So if you have like Steam installed per se, and you want to do Steam, you can click on this little part right here, and it'll bring up Steam and all your other applications you have installed on this computer, and you can choose to put them onto your quick start if you wish or not. It's completely your choice. Some people like it, some people just don't. I mean, everyone's different. That is regular old Ubuntu. Kubuntu is KDE. It's more like Windows feel. Has a lot of options that you can change right out of the gate without hacking around too much on it. It's got a lot of choices. Ubuntu is the lightweight distribution. It runs on little to no RAM doesn't have to be a ultra high performance processor it just works and if you do have a lot of RAM and ultra high processor it will run even better because you're not allocating all that system resources to running the operating system 
Mate's kind of the middle of the road along with Zubuntu. There's very little different. Well, there's a lot of differences, but there's not a, as far as RAM usage, CPU usage, and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot of difference between Mate and Zubuntu, in my experience. Um, they just have a different desktop look and feel. Um, today I will be showing you to install Ubuntu Mate. So if you can follow along in this video step by step, you'll click on Ubuntu Mate and you will go to the download tab. 64 bit, unless you have a 32 bit, which I always do the 64 bits, I always have more than 3 gigs of RAM. And I always do the LTS. It is supported longer. It's got a stable kernel. It's just stable. Um, the Disco Dingo is a uh, that is another release, but it's losing support in January 20, along with Eon. I can't pronounce that. 19.10 is will in support in July 2020. So I always go LTC. These are basically the testing branches, if you will. They're throwing out new new stuff that they're thinking about adding to the LTC. The LTS, sorry. So click on that, and then you decide how you're wanting to download it. Um, I recommend downloading as a torrent. If you don't have a torrent option, you can just click on this and it'll download to your browser. I'm not going to do this, I've already done it, but that's that. Um, so, next, what you'll need after the distro is downloaded, you'll need a way to burn it onto either a flash drive or a DVD. I use flash drives, they're so much quicker to install onto an operating system, uh, but some people just don't have that option. They have DVDs. Um, so you can do it either way. What I recommend, USB. So do that. I recommend Belena Etcher. It works in Windows and Mac. And all you got to do is click on the download. I'm not going to do it because I already done it. Just download it, install it. Bada bing, bada boom. And here we are. We have Belena right here. So then you open Belena and it went to my other screen and so what you're gonna do after you install it and you download the image that you need you're gonna select the image um, if you're gonna try just one operating system you'll have one I have several I like to try out new operating systems every once in a while but that's not the point we're gonna do Ubuntu mate so we're open it and of course we got a USB plugged in if you have multiple USBs, so say like you got a four terabyte external hard drive and it's wanting to go there, it's wanting to show this instead of your flash drive, all you gotta do is click on change and select the flash drive that you want. And then hit flash. And it'll go through the flash process and once it's done, you'll have a flashed image of Ubuntu Mate. So now that's done, you have your copy of Ubuntu on your USB drive. So what we're going to do here in this virtual box is I am going to allocate a couple CPU processor cores. I'm going to label UEF or EFI, not UEFI. Um, we're going to, come on, go there, storage. So this is going to be similar to your USB. I am going to plug in my USB, aka Ubuntu, into my computer. So this is simulating the USB. This is simulating my hard drive. Now that you have a computer turned off and your USB stick, in the computer. Now what you can do is turn on your computer. So for me I'll hit start and start. I don't know why it keeps popping over there. 
So now it's going to run through its startup phase. So pause a few minutes for that. No, nope, don't pause. Just let it do its thing. And then we'll get to this menu. And in this menu, you try your install. We're going to install. Oh, if you need to change your language, here's your language selections. So we're going to install. English is fine. So we're going to do a minimal install because we can, we're going to install all this stuff later. But this is just bare bones. And we're going to install third parties for graphic cards, Wi-Fi dongles, so on and so forth. And for this one, we're going to choose to erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu. Now, if you have Windows installed on your computer already, it'll give you another option to install alongside. What this does is create a dual boot. Uh, dual boot allows you to boot into Windows, or it allows you to boot into Linux on startup. Uh, it's your choice, whatever you want to do, but we're going to erase disk and install Ubuntu Mate. And, of course, it's going to say... You sure? Yes, for sure. Continue. This is the time zone. So this will set your clock to the time zone that you live in. I live in the Chicago time zone. So we'll click continue. Choose your name. Um, it's whatever. Call it whatever you want to. Your choice. Uh, computer name. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of networking, you want to make that a unique name. Which obviously you hit, you type in your, na your name and it types it there for you too. Username, you can change that. You can call it whatever you like to. And this is your password. Now, the password isn't just for logging in, this is also your super user password, which we'll get into later. So make it a super secure. And you're going to choose to automatically log you in, which will log you in when you start up the computer or require a password to log in. We want to require a password. And now pat yourself on the back, you have installed Linux onto your machine. So what we gotta do now is go ahead and restart. So we're going to restart and it wants you to remove the media. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and power off the machine because I'm using VirtualBox. Um, so, as you can see, it's ejected. All you gotta do is rip it out once it restarts, or when it said remove media, just rip it out. And now we can power the machine back up. And voila. This is the login screen. And voila, we have Linux Mint. So, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them down in the description box, in the little comment box. Have a nice day.